So now we are going to discuss in more detail what is a correlation. And one of the important concepts you have to understand is the covariance. So the way that we can investigate the correlation between the two variables is depend on the covariance. So for correlation, the research questions is something like this. Okay. So usually we ask the question, is there a significant relationship between two variables? So for example, I want to know if there is any relationship between the, the semester average point with the cumulative average point. Or we want to know whether there is a relationship between the body height and body weight among the students. Or maybe I want to ask whether there is a relationship between the academic performance that measure as a cumulative grade point average with the body height. After we have the research questions, okay, one or several research questions, then we can start to think about our sampling design or experiment design. So for regression analysis, you will don't have the grouping or treatment because we are not asking the question about the differences between two populations. So for response variable, how many variables? So in this case, it's two, two variables. And what are the variables? So we already seen in the research question, so we can identify clearly, for example, body height and body weight, and the data type for each of the variables. So in this exercise for correlations, we only deal with the scale data. And also we need to determine what is our observation unit, okay, from which the variable are measured or obtained. For replicate, how many observation unit that we want to be included in this analysis. And also the sampling. So from the research questions, what is our population? Okay, we have to determine the population, then only then we can select the SPAN unit or collect the data from the SPAN unit or observation unit. So each of these need to explain in detail before you collect the data and right after you have your research questions. So the next step is to collect data. So this is how it looks like. And then after you collect data, you have to organize your data. So here we have the student. So we collect the data from 15 students. And then for each student, we measure the semester grade point average, the cumulative grade point average, the body height and body weight. Okay. So after that, the next step, after we collect the data and organize in the proper table, we can summarize the data. So if you learn in the first week, we can summarize the data by using graph. So for this research question, we want to know the relationship. So the best chart that we use is a scatter plot. Okay. So make sure you plot two variables okay, on each of these axis and label the name of the variable and also unit. And then just plot all the data point okay by using the measurement as the coordinate as y coordinate so for the other pair of variable we also can plot the data so here you can see that it seems like there is a strong relationship between these two variable how about the academic performance and body height so when we plot data this is how it looks like so as you can see after we collect the data even though before we perform the statistical analysis, we can already see some pattern in our data set, whether there's a relationship between these two variables. For example, in this case, it's not very clear there's a relationship. And this one is very clear. And this one, there seems there are some relationship, but it's not that clear as this one. Okay. So this interpretation is very subjective in based on our uh, judgment. That's the reason why the next step is to perform the statistical analysis and measure the strength of the relationship at the same time whether the relationship is statistically significant. So if you put this side by side, it's very hard for you to have a very objective evaluation of the data set. 
So this is a sample of 15 students, right? So we collect from 150 students of this course. Whatever conclusion that we make based on the sample is for the population. So our we need to perform the statistical analysis to see how reliable of our conclusion. So for statistical analysis, it's the same step that we use as the t-test. So in this case, we formulate our hypothesis, set the criteria. So for the correlation, the criteria that we use is referring to the t-table. And also we use the t-test okay, to test the correlation, so the strength of the relationship. After that, we compare the calculated t with our critical t. And then we make a conclusion based on the result. So we're going to go through this in the next two lectures in detail. So in this lecture, the most important thing is for you to understand what is the correlation and what the importance of the covariance in the correlation. So the correlation is going to measure the strength of the relationship between two continuous variables. And for each variable, there is a distribution. So you can imagine for the body height, you have the distribution. For the body weight, you also have their distribution for each of the variable. So when you put this little variable together, if you plot it, you will have a three-dimensional curve. Okay, so you can plot it. Okay. And this is what we call the joint distribution. So the correlation determine how much of two variables co-vary together. So there are two keywords here. One is vary, so there might be some changes, and together. So whether one variable increase or decrease as the other variable increase or decrease. So I'll just give you a few data set. Six data set have the same body height and body weight mean, but the variation among the data set are different. Without performing any analysis, just from the distribution of data, okay, how vary okay, of the data and whether they vary together. Okay, based on the concept you have learned just now. So in this case, for data set A, do you think there's a relationship between the body height and body weight? So spend a few seconds to think about it, yes or no. How about data set B? Do you think there's a relationship between these two variables? C, do you think there's a relationship? So for the A, it's very clear that there's no relationship because both variables are not very, okay? There's no variation, not much variation between these both variables. On the data set B, only one of the variables vary, okay? There's a variation, so in terms of the body height, all right? The distribution of data and the body height for each of the points is quite different from each other. So if you measure the mean, then you can calculate the variation. However, the variation or the data is very only for a single variable. For data set C, it's a similar case as B, but this time the data is not very or different from each other in the body height, but it's different from each other in terms of the body weight. So in this case, one of the variable is very, so they no, do not vary together. So that's the reason why for this three data set, it's very clear that without performing any analysis or calculation of the strength, we know that there's no correlation. How about this one, the data set D? So this one is different from A, B, C, because this time we have both variables that are very in both axes. Okay? The value for the body height and body weight between the points are very different from each other. But do they vary together at a similar trend? So how about the data set E and F? So for E and F, as D, both variables are very correct. So you can see the distribution of the data. And the both variables for each of the data set are quite different from each other. At the same time, they vary together. 
okay, and the same way. So in this case, we know that even though before you learn how to calculate the correlation coefficient and also perform the statistical test, you already know that the E and F, there's a strong relationship as compared to D. The D is more likely there's no relationship. And for E and F, the type of the relationship is different. So for data set E, the two variable has a positive relationship. That means that the higher the student will have a heavier body. On the other hand, the data set F is the opposite direction. So the students who are shorter are more heavy compared to the students that are taller. Okay. So it's the opposite relationship, but both have a very strong relationship, just judging from the curve. So that's the reason why it's very important to plot the data, to summarize data before you perform the statistical analysis. So the example just now is just, just to uh, remind you some of the intuition that you have developed during your many years in the school. So when you see the graph, they plot the two continuous variables. In most cases, you can already have some idea whether the both variables have a strong relationship or weak relationship and what type of the relationship is it. So in this course, now you're going to learn the proper way how to quantify the strength. The first thing you have to learn is to calculate how both variables vary together. Remember the keyword, vary together. So one of the measurements is a covariance. So the covariance is similar to variance in terms of the calculations. But this time we have both variables. So now we have the data set. So the first thing that we need to do is this is a parametry test. Of course, it's to calculate the mean. So that means that for each SN unit, we measure the body height. Okay. Then we can calculate the mean of the body height. So the mean value will be somewhere here. Similarly, you can calculate the mean of the body weight as well. After that, we can calculate the variance, right? But in this case, we will not calculate the variance. We will calculate the covariance. So we will focus on two points. So first is a point here. Okay, so this is the first point, and then this is the second point. So we're going to see how far of the point value vary from the mean. Okay, the covariance is a variance, it's a measurement how far of the of the value, given value, away from mean, how far of this dot away from the mean for both variables. So we focus on the first point. So we need, can calculate the deviation, so what we call the square cross product. So we're going to discuss this in detail in a few minutes. So what we can do is we take the value, so in this case it's a body height of this student, then minus the mean of the body height, then we get the deviations. Okay? But this is only for the body height. And we have another variable for this observation unit, which is the body weight. So we do the same thing. So we're going to take the body weight of this observation unit and then minus the body weight mean. Okay. And then you get the value. So you can see a few characteristics. First is that this body height is on the left hand side of the mean. So this has a negative value. On the other hand, the same student, the body weight is much larger than the average body weight. That's the reason why we have the positive value. So what we're going to do next is to multiply these two division, negative 6.8 multiplied by 2. Then we get a negative 13.6. So this is the division for first point. So you can see the sign of the value is depend on the location of the dot as compared to the mean of both variables. So now we move to the next dot, which is this one. So first we calculate the mean and then we find the deviation for the first variable, then we calculate for the second variable. So in this case for this student, so we can see this is a student, the body height and also the body weight is smaller than the average, correct? So that's the reason why we have a negative value, the difference 
for both variables. After we multiply these two values, then we will get the positive value. The division of each of the points from the mean of each of the variable can be either positive or negative and is depending on the value whether it's larger or smaller than the respective mean. So each of the variable is larger than the average mean, then the value, the deviation will be positive value. So that means that this is a positive value, this is a positive value, correct? Because this one minus this one, the green is shown in a green, green color. So all these values are positive value. On the other hand, if the measurement of both variables are smaller than the mean of both variables, so the deviation is negative for the body height, the deviation is also negative for the body weight. So if we multiply these two values, you will get a positive. So in this side, we also have all the positive values in their deviation. And on the other quadrant, because you have one value is larger than mean and one value is smaller than mean, then after we multiply both value, we will get a negative value. Okay. This one as well. So we have the positive and negative and we multiply them. The end product will be negative value. So this is a negative deviation. This is a positive deviation. So you can see the value of the deviation for each of the observation unit. So now if we go back to this plot okay, and apply with what we learned before about the deviation, if you try to explain why there is no relationship for this variable in this data set, and this one, and this one, and how about this one? Okay, is there a strong relationship between both variables? In this case, is there any strong relationship between these two variables? Is this a strong relationship between the two variables? So try to apply the things that you learned just now can be related to the product of multiplication of both variable division for each of the point. So all these six data set, they have the same mean of body height and same mean of a body weight. So as you can see here, there's no variations. Okay, there's not much deviation. So that's the reason why it's more likely you say there's no relationship. This one as well, so there's a relation on the body height, but there's no relation in the body weight. Okay, this one as well. So opposite is the previous one, data set D. How about this one? So this one we know that, that we have some deviation which are the positive and some deviation which are the negative. And in this case, when we just look at the block without looking at the deviation, we will say that there's no relationship. And this is how it looks like in terms of the deviation. How about this one? So you notice that we have all the points that fall in the positive deviation. So they vary together. This point. The measurement of the body height is smaller than mean and the body weight also smaller than mean. And this one is larger than mean for the body height and also larger than mean than the body weight. In this case, both variables for all the observation unit are vary together in the same way. How about the last example? So this one will say there's a negative relationship. So as you can see, all the points are fall in the negative deviations. So if you calculate the deviation for each of the points, one of the value will be larger than mean, another one will be smaller than mean. Same as the point on the other side. Okay. So in this case, they are very together. So now we know that based on the deviation, so what we call the square of cross product, we can have some idea about the relationship. So they give you some measurement or the calculation to show whether there's a relationship. Okay. So you can then if you sum all the values, so for example in this case, the data set F, for each of the dot you have a negative deviation, so you have a negative value, so let's say negative three, negative two, negative one, and so on and so forth. If you sum all the value, 
then you get a negative value, large value, with a sign of negative. On the other hand, for positive one, then all the deviations are positive, correct? So in this case, you will see both variables vary together. For this data set, you will see that there's more likely there's no relationship. If you sum all the value, and each of the value is cancel out each other. Okay, so the negative value plus the positive value, then they will cancel out each other. So it's more likely you will get the value is very close to zero. And this one will be a large value sign. This is will be a large value for the negative sign. So just now we spend quite a lot of time to help you to develop some understanding about the covariance. So how the value call vary from each other. So the next one is to calculate a value, what we call the correlation coefficient, which the value will indicate the direction and also the strength of the relationship. And after we calculate the strength of the relationship, we also need to perform a statistical test to test whether the strength that we calculate is statistically significant. So these two topics we're going to discuss in the next two lectures.